Okay, so again they will ask you questions like this is a period x and y belong to the same period and x belongs to group 2, y belongs to group, okay, x belongs to group suppose 14, y belongs to group 15, whose atomic size will be greater. So atomic size decreases along a period. So from x to y the atomic size will decrease. So atomic size of x will be greater than y. That is about atomic size. And the last trend we come to is the metallic or non-metallic properties. Now, this metallic and non-metallic properties, I already told you that as we go towards the right of the periodic table, we will see that the non-metallic nature of the elements will increase. Due to what? Because on the left of the periodic table, suppose you consider any group, group 2. So it has lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. So see, lithium and beryllium are metals. Then all these are non-metals. Or boron, you can say that it's a metalloid. Metalloids are nothing but the intermediates between metals and non-metals. They have some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals. So metalloids are nothing but uh, elements having properties of both metals and non-metals. So boron is a metalloid. Another metalloids are silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony. These are all metalloids. So after boron, in this period, there, is, there are non-metals. Now, why is it so? Because lithium and beryllium have one and two electrons respectively in their outermost shells. So, this has one, valency one, this has two, this has three, this has four. Now, after four or after three as such, we'll, they, instead of giving away electrons, they start accepting electrons because it's easier to give away, it's, it's easier to accept three electrons for nitrogen than to give away its five electrons. So that is why in the right side of the periodic table, due to the larger number of electrons in the outermost shell, they start accepting electrons instead of giving away electrons and thus they start behaving like non-metals. And in case of lithium and uh, in this left side of the periodic table and especially group 1 and group 2, group 1 and group 2 they are just pure metals. I mean there are no metalloids or non-metals in these two groups. They are 100% all of them are metals. And on that side of the periodic table, there are non-metals and metalloids. And the thing which we were all confused with was the 10 
groups in the middle of group 2 and group 30. That was because these metal, these elements, they are known as transition elements. Transition means that it's a intermediate stage between the metals and the non-metals. They are not metalloids as such. They are just in the pro in the uh, they are like they can't be metals and they can't be non-metals. So they are the transition elements. So and this thing is called the transition series. So the transition series comes between the metals and the non-metals. So it's something like from the left of the periodic table, you go to the right of the periodic table, they slowly start becoming non-metals and by the time you reach the extreme right, they become non-metals. So what you can conclude from this is that non-metallic properties increase along a period. And now let us examine down a group. So what will happen? C group 1, lithium, sodium, potassium, let us see these three. So lithium is 2, 1, sodium is 2, 8, 1, potassium is 2, 8, 8, 1. So what do you expect? The valencies of all the three are same and all three are metals. But which one will be more metallic? More metallic in the sense which one can donate its electron more easily? Which one can create an ion easier? Create a plus charge easier, e easily? So in lithium, you see that there are only two shells. So this outermost electron is actually very close to the nucleus. In this there are three shells, so it's a bit farther than the nucleus. In this, there are four shells, so it's quite far away from the nucleus. So, in this potassium, due to being far away from the nucleus, what it what it will do that it 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 does not have much interaction with the nucleus as lithium and sodium. So, being far away. It will want, it will be easily, it can easily get away from the atom and form this 288 configuration with K plus ion. Everyone will lose one electron to form a positive charge, but potassium will lose it more easily because the electron is far away from the nucleus, so the nucleus can't hold it very tightly. So it's a bit loose. So it can escape easier, easily. And in case of lithium, it, it cannot ex escape very easily because it's quite close to the nucleus. So that is why the tendency to form K plus ion from K will be more than the tendency to form Li plus ion from Li. And due to this, we can conclude that K is more metallic than Li and Na. So this is the trend of metallic nature increase increasing. So the metallic nature 
will increase down the group and this will happen for any group even for the non metals fluorine chlorine bromine fluorine has only two shells it has 2 2,7 so if if by chance it wants to donate seven electrons it can not do it very easily rather than bromine doing it bromine although it does not donate seven electrons or does not donate even a single electron but if it wants to donate the electron it can do it much easier than the job is much easier than for fluorine so the metallic nature will always increase down the group even for non metals 